So today I'm going to go ahead and make uh, my month worth of muffins that I eat every morning for breakfast and I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. Um, last time we made the muffins, we made it with orange and we made it with cranberries. And this time I'm gonna do um, orange, cranberries, and I'm gonna go ahead and just slice them about in half. And instead of doing a walnut, I'm gonna do pistachios because I think that will be amazing. My delicious muffins are done and cool. I ended up getting 24. Mm -hmm. You can see deliciousness on the inside. The pistachio adds a little something different. Um, so that's good. Kind of a nice change, especially when it's something I eat every day. Really good. And now 2018, January. Woo! <laughs> and if you can't tell, I'm a little sick. I think I have a cold. So tonight we're gonna make this um, the curry cauliflower soup that Dr. Gardner posted on his website the other day, and we'll give that a try and play how it goes. So I'm gonna talk about our holiday week after Christmas. Our son got married. Yes, he got married. Yay! <laughs> We're gonna start with our two tablespoons of olive oil. And my awesome Harry Potter apron that my friend Dee gave me for Christmas. I didn't say what temperature to do it on, so we'll do it on like medium. Chopping everything um, into some big chunks, and then I'm going to go ahead and use my chopper. Easy peasy. Yep. Shopping done. And I'm just starting to cheer up now. <laughs> That's the beauty of having a chopper. That's a lot of onion, isn't it? It's a lot of onion. It was a, it was a very large onion. Maybe you don't need to put it all in. Just do like, how much do you think? Uh, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that looks about right. Now I have uh, ginger. I'm gonna go ahead and peel off as much as I can. It's kind of difficult with the little knobby portions. Ginger kind of has a natural antibiotic. And this time of year- And anti-inflammatory. Yes, which is awesome. And, and you know what I have to say right here is just how I'm super happy that I didn't peel one of my fingers. Yeah. It's always, always a good thing. video it doesn't tell you how long to cook these but yeah and then I watched another YouTube video where the lady said they're really good if you kind of let them get caramelized a little bit um, I'm just gonna go ahead and scooch that little bit of ginger in there all right okay and now we're gonna go ahead and put the two cloves of garlic in. I have my little garlic press. You go ahead and squeeze it out. To clean it out, it comes with this little brush to help get in between those little holes where everything comes out. My hands are slippery from the washing everything. And all this little stuff right here, I'm just gonna scrape off like that. Put in, flip this open, and you see that little bit that's left? I just take my knife and work it out. Just easy or like that. Or you that little brush thing. True. All right, and let me tell you this about the garlic. If you look down in the bottom of the pan, you can see where that's already starting to burn a little bit. So you wanna be real careful with the garlic. It burns super easy of all of the ingredients we've put in so far. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze the next clove in. I'm gonna take that off the heat for a second. Yeah, probably. We 
We're just going to add a little bit more oil. I think there's quite a bit of onion here, so I'm going to add another tablespoon so these don't fry or stick, I mean. What I'm doing now is I'm just cutting the cauliflower into um, smaller portions so that I can go ahead and put it in the chopper and chop it up pretty fine. So you're going to chop it in the chopper because we don't have one of those little puree things that you can do. We could pour it into the food processor after it cooks. That's true. Oh baby. It's a lot of cauliflower. And you know, actually to be honest with you, the head of cauliflower that I got was very small. Yeah, it was. This it looks was like a lot very more. small. So um, when you do your cauliflower soup, don't be surprised if you have way more cauliflower. And I tried to pick the largest one they had too. If you have one of those cool little blenders or you want to do it in your food processor, then you can put the bigger chunks in like the other video does. We'll probably still want to put this in the food processor to make it creamy, though. Um, and also, I'll have Dave look up on like Amazon the food pro the blender that they use. Oh yeah, we'll put a link in the description. Put a link just for you know just to make it a little easier. In case you want one. I have got curry powder and two teaspoons. Next is cumin. One teaspoon. That one. Awesome. And then salt to taste. Which is always an odd thing to me because you can't taste it right now. You gotta taste it later. Put like a teaspoon in for now and then we'll salt to taste later. And then next up is the coconut milk. Yeah. Shake it before you open it. And then just in case you're wondering, the recipe on the video said full fat coconut milk. We just think that means not the light. Yep. One. Dude. Basically a can. Basically a can. I mean, it's like barely not there. Close enough. But close enough, for sure. And how many ounce can? Is that like a 13 ounce? 13.66. Okay, right. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start adding the vegetable broth. And there's six cups of that, right? Yes. You can also do chicken broth, but we decided to do vegetable broth. I'm going to talk about our holiday week after Christmas. We sort of... Our son got married. Yes, he got married. Yay! <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Hales! <laughs> Uh, so we went to Disneyland, I'll, I guess I'll edit some video in about right here, but we went to Disneyland for a couple days. We made a mild attempt to try and eat healthy, uh, but as you'll see in this video, Disneyland was insanely busy. So according to our app, according to our app, Disneyland is now full, they're not letting any new people in. So, we are limited on choices on where we can eat food. You can see, we're in the pizza place. This is our family. <laughs> and so, uh, we've got to come in here to this pizza place. But I know they have pizza and they do have some salads up here, which I've gotten before. This is my salad. I got the dressing on the side. It's just chicken and lettuce and things. And Jan got a kid's meal of pasta. Spaghetti and meatballs. And some breadsticks. And carrots. But I will say this, even though it was probably the busiest we've ever seen Disneyland, we do have season passes, so we go quite often. Um, I will say Christmas is probably, or that week between Christmas and New Year's, a few of the days in there 
were pretty busy. The day after Christmas, not too bad. It was actually pretty good. Yeah, pretty surprisingly. Quiet. So the 26th wasn't bad. 27th, bad. 27th, 28th, pretty bad. <laughs> uh, but, and we were there with some of our family that hadn't been in a long time. So we were able to take them around and they were able to do everything they wanted to do. And even though it was crazy busy, Disney does a pretty good job with their fast pass system. Absolutely. If you get the max pass and do you- Do it, work yeah. it. So, uh, yeah. It's still doable, um, but we kind of gave up on really trying to hunt down healthy foods. <laughs> well, I did bring my muffins. Yep. I yep. did. Every morning I had one of my muffins. I love those freaking muffins. They're so convenient. They're so nice. They travel well, so I just pulled a bunch out of the freezer before we left. Had enough for every morning, and so that's what I had, and it was perfect. And then we did like our green tea and MCT oil and the Vital Reds and the prebiotic and probiotic every day just in the hotel. The past, I will say, 10 days uh, have not been eating super healthy. We ate out, we went to Chick-fil-A, Five Guys, like a whole bunch of just eating out. And I'll tell you what, um, I'm feeling... The difference, like I'm bloated, I don't feel good, my skin feels like crap. Um, I've been in pain, <laughs> so it was a rough week, uh, and my face feels all flush and dry and everything. So I I miss eating healthy. So we're trying to get back on track, trying to get back eating healthy every meal. I pretty much threw away a bunch of the leftover candy and junk food. Um, got Christmas all put away. And so hopefully now I'll eat this yummy food and get over my cold and get that good healthy food back in me and my gut will start shrinking, stop being bloated and I'll feel better. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I love those little short recipe videos. They're really popular on Facebook and, and Instagram and stuff like that because you can see the whole recipe made in like one minute. The thing I hate about them is they don't give you the details. So <laughs> for example, on this one, it just shows them putting the cauliflower in and then blending it, which is maybe all we need to do because it's hot now. But I don't know if you're supposed to cook it to make the cauliflower soft or any of that. So we're gonna we're, we've been cooking it for about five minutes. We turned it up to medium high, um, just to get it like maybe just before it boils or right about boiling, and then we'll. I think we're gonna put it in the food processor and blend it to creamy. But you could eat it like this. Yeah, for sure. But might as well make it creamy just for the fun of it. Oh. Oh. Uh, it's still kind of mushy. Should I blend it more? Uh, I don't know how much more you're going to get it blended. I don't know. You can always try. Maybe just dump a little bit out, though, into the... Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because I think it'll be a weird texture if I don't. So after putting it in the bowls I, and I was starting to blend the rest, I realized that a lot of the other ingredients had settled on the bottom of this. So we mixed it all back together after I blended it. And then I decided to put it back on the stove for a little while because it's still fairly liquidy. And I was wanting to make it a little more creamy, so we're going to reduce it down a little, let it steam off some of that vegetable broth. Um, and you can see right here, that's about how the consistency we blended it. Um, it might have gone creamier if we had cooked the broccoli or the cauliflower a little longer first, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. So, uh, I brought this back to a boil and then just turned it down to let it simmer. I've been letting it simmer for about 10 minutes now. I'm going to scoop some portions back into the uh, food processor and see if I can get that smashed down even more. We'll see. So here's after cooking it and blending it again. And yeah, it definitely was worth doing. Much thicker now. And refined a lot more, so. That's the way I like it. Now to taste it. Yes, I can change my pajamas and took a shower. <laughs> and it felt amazing. <laughs> All right, you're first to try it. Okay. Oh yeah, that looks super good. That's super good. 
it's not that spicy. It's super fragrant. Like our whole house smells like Indian food. <laughs> I can't smell it at all. <laughs> but it's not that spicy at all. It's very good. It's a really nice consistency and texture. I really like it. All right, let me try it. Yeah, it's really good. Very good. Yeah, like, really good. I mean, yeah, it tastes like Indian food soup. Yeah. And we love Indian food. So. We do. Yeah, and this made a lot, so. It made a lot. It, which is nice, so we can have it for lunch and mm -hmm. eat it every day until I get better. Well, and, and it's, and it's really good. kind of nice, especially, you know, this time of year with a lot of sickness and everything going around. It's an awesome recipe. And, you know, I always love to make extra dinner anyway because then I freeze the meals and take them for lunch. It's just yeah, an really easy good. way. And with that, we will say, hopefully if you were bad like us and ate a bunch of crap food for the last week or two, <laughs> that you are now back on track and eating healthy and starting to feel better. And with that, we'll see you next time.